Shalom Israel. My name is Afisa Kayad, one out of ISUPK Jamaica. ISUPK started 1 West, 125th Street, Harlem, New York. ISUPK is run by Commanding General Yahana, one man with the rank and the authority to lead Israel at this time. I say, Yahawa Basham Yahawashai Barakatam to my brothers. Yahawa Shamar Alathan Basham Yahawashai to my sisters. All right, so we have a talk about, you know what I mean, Shiva, the East Indian God. You know what I mean? That Rastafari-ism got, gets its, you know what I mean, dreadlocks, which is not real locks. See, we have a breakdown what real rock, um, real locks are in this video. You understand? Shiva, the dreadlock-wearing God. You understand? And the weed-smoking God that Rastafari-ism got its custom from. You understand? You might have thought that the Rastafari community was being original when they, you know what I mean? start growing dreadlocks, you understand, which is not real locks, dreads, which is the proper term for what the Rastafari community wear, you understand, and you might thought they were, you know what I mean, were original when they started smoking ganja and saying that this is in the worship of Eli Selassian for you to, you know what I mean, gain some spiritual, you know what I mean, um, transcendence, you understand, that is just the copying of another culture. You know what I mean? Which is just idolatry. You understand? So without further ado, like up this video. You know what I mean? Share it around. Leave your questions or your comments or your disagreements. If you disagree, you know what I mean? Feel free to put it in the comment section. You know what I mean? Share this on our social media platform. You understand? And also, we are calling out the Rastafari community. You know what I mean? To come answer these questions, these things that we are bringing forth about the Rastafari community. We are calling out the Rastafari community to answer these. You understand? Come with your rebuttals, your facts. You know what I mean? Call the number in this page. In all our pages, we have a number there where you can call. Let's arrange a debate so we can sit down our live stream a debate. You know what I mean? And discuss this information that we are bringing out. You understand? If the Rastafari community does not answer this call, I, you know what I mean? It is common sense that it is a forfeit. You know what I mean? It is common sense that the Rastafari community would have conceded that all of this, what I am saying is true, that the ISUPK Jamaica is bringing out is true. You understand? By them not answering the call, this would be a forfeit of them saying that, look, we concede that what you are saying is true. And, and guess what? We now go take no SM mother and styling as you have in knowledge. You can't disrespect, you know what I mean, and think that that will go down as, you know what I mean, you defending your religion. Insults is not defending your stance. You only look ignorant if you come with insults after people bring out, you know what I mean, facts about what you, you um, your community is doing wrong. You should come with your records to show that, look, what you are saying is incorrect. Here is what our records say. You understand? You telling somebody to S them mother, you know what I mean, and threatening somebody, it doesn't make your, you know what I mean, belief true. That is what we are saying. The best way to do this is to call a number. Let us have an amicable deb debate because people are listening to our videos and they are realizing that what you have been practicing for all these years in Jamaica is a lie. You know what I mean? And they are yet to see you come out with any information to rebut what we are saying. You understand? So call the number. Yeah, man. All right. So with that now, we're going to jump into our video. See? And this is an Indian girl. You know what I mean? Basically, well, what she did was she just put in some, she just twist up her ear like a lax. You understand? Or she just put in some fake lax. But this was she, you know what I mean? Going into the spirit of the worship of Shiva that her people has always done. You understand? So she was just celebrating her culture. You know what I mean? Normally she does not wear this, but she's going to let you know that, look, our people have been doing this for years and this is our culture. And what I am doing right now is going into the culture of what our people have been doing. And this is not original in Rastafari, is it? All right. Nithyanandam, uh, this is Mahajaya, and as you can see today, I look a little different, and that is because I have dreadlocks, and I actually want to talk to you about dreadlocks and where they originated, and actually the spiritual significance of dreadlocks, or as 
uh, in India, as they call them, Shiva Jatas. So dreadlocks actually originated in India. You know, Shiva is the first being ever to wear dreadlocks. And, you know, out in the West, a lot of people, when they see dreadlocks, they think of Jamaicans, uh, they think of the country Jamaica, or they think of, um, you know, the music icon, Bob Marley. But even though Bob Marley made dreadlocks really, really popular, he definitely made uh, dreadlocks an icon for people to wear. The originator of dreadlocks, the trendsetter of dreadlocks was definitely Shiva. So I actually want to explain the significance of jatas and like, you know, why we have them and their spiritual significance. So when we have jatas, right, and actually uh, dreadlocks is in the agamas, they tell you exactly uh, how many dreadlocks to have on your head, how long to wear them, and, you know, even to the point of where they said, like in the agamas, where it says that to even put five rudrakshas after you get your jatas. So actually, let me go into that. So in all right, so she basically I'll explain it. We're not going to go into the explaining of the dreadlocks. You understand? We just show you that the Indian, the East Indian are, you know what I mean? They are familiar with the dreadlocks because it has been in their culture for thousands of years. Rastafariism has been around for like about, you know what I mean? Not even a hundred years yet. You understand? About like um, 80 something years. See? All right, so... Where did how did Rastafariism come to you know what I mean pick up this East Indian custom in their religion? No, it all started with Leonard Owell. You understand? Now we're gonna show you that right now. Remember for like the video, share, you know what I mean, on all social media platform. Zin. All right, so we're gonna show you, you know what I mean, how Leonard Owell got in contact with East Indians and you know what I mean, and how he took the, their practices and incorporated in you know what i mean in the rastafari religion that he was creating see this says um owell which is leonard owell emergence in clarendon took place at a time when many east indians lived in parts of the parish it is therefore no surprise that as both ill and lee have pointed out owell made use of his exposure to indian not native indian you know but east indian culture and the Hindi language. See, let's jump to the next paragraph. Owell's use of Hindu visual symbolism in the promotion of the Rastafari movement has received attention from scholars and the most recent work on this has been done by the late art historian Petrine Archer. In addition, the ritual use of marijuana and its association with Indians which appear in the tradition of Sad Anna and Pasad or Prasad, you know what I mean, which is East Indian worship of Shiva. You know what I mean? All right. We soon get to the dreadlock park. So there you see, you know what I mean? There you see the um the, the weed smoking, how marijuana came into Rastafariism. Of course, we know that Leonard Owell himself did not wear dreadlocks. Um when probably well, he grew marijuana. So more likely he smoked it, but he himself did not dreadlocks him here, but Rastas round him, pick up that and took, took that onto themselves and they dreadlocks their ear, even though he didn't. You understand? But that is where it come from and the weed smoking. See, we have to read an article where his son, you know what I mean? Monty Owell went into this as well. You understand? Talk about this as well. See, remember for like this video, Share it around. Share it to your Rastafari bridging. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. All right. So his son's name is Monty Owell. Let me make the screen a little bit bigger so you can see it so that you don't, you know what I mean, think that I am not reading an article. You know what I mean? Like I said. See? So it said, between the 12th and 13th of August, 1951, Charlie Hurricane, the deadliest tropical cyclone of the um, Atlantic Ocean hurricane period, caused the worst natural disaster of the 20th century in Jamaica when winds reached over 200 kilometers per hour. Appendix at the end of the volume 
shows a photo. All right, we're not going to read that. It says, Ganja arrived in Jamaica through the system of indentured laborers' ships orchestrated by the British. Let me read that again. Ganja or cannabis sativas then arrived in Jamaica through the system of indentured laborers' ships orchestrated by the British. So the British brought indentured servants here from India, one of their colonies at the time, and they brought cannabis sativas to Jamaica, which is ganja. See, the cannabis plant originated from Central Asia roughly three, three, um, 36 million years ago. Of course, we know that, you know what I mean, the white man's science, that the 36 million years ago, nah, la -a. See, I indentured workers, mainly Hindu, carried cannabis seeds and genetic material strain with them to Jamaica. The use of cannabis in India is very old, originated in, in the Indus Valley civilization. We soon come to the dreadlocks when people exploit it both for commercial and medicinal purpose. The Hindu practice of smoking is considered as a method of transcendence a type of sadhana, a method for attaining God realization. So the Hindus in their worship of Shiva, you understand? They smoke the, 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 um, the marijuana because they thought it would make them ascend to a God-like status, which we know that is a lie. You understand? But just to tell you that this is what the Rastafarians practice, not knowing that this is where it came from. Early Rastafarians knew this, but later rastafarians that that you know what i mean are around today and even our people our society smoke weed before, because of the rastafari community they don't know where this came from and they don't know that it's mixed in idolatry and we're going to show you what the bible say about idolatry see so this book is monty owell milestone of life among rastafari that is leonard owell's oldest son you understand all right let's jump over to the locks now then let's so we know where the ganja come from. Let's go over to the locks. You understand? Are the dreads, which we tell you that look, that is not real locks. We're gonna show you what real locks are. You understand? All right. So let's scroll up. And this say the black gods of India, Shiva G, dreadlock god of India by Sadhi Ram Dan San Godif. See, let's scroll down. Shivaism was one of the first religions in India because Shiva is the Hindu equivalent to Adam. Shiva was the first man on earth and Parvati, his wife, was created by Valmiki from the flesh of Shiva's thigh. So it copies the Adam and Eve story, which, you know what I mean? We know Christians don't understand the Adam and Eve story correctly, but it copied it in a way that it said, well, not from the rib, but he took his wife from the thigh. And we know that all of that, all of that Hinduism madness is lies, right? See, let me continue reading. Shiva G, which is Shiva, did have dreadlocks and also black skin. All right. So now our Rastafari bridging them now with our one say, see, he was a black man, a black culture. Look, the entire earth was black. You know what I mean? With the exception of the white man. You understand? Black, dark-skinned Indians do not consider them Africans, and dark-skinned Africans do not consider themselves Israelites. All of them are dark-skinned, but they are not the same people. Not even the, the Africans them of different tribes consider themselves the same people. People are divided, you know what I mean, in different tribes. They do not consider themselves the same people. So you can't say these are Africans because they are black. The entire earth was black. And the entire earth was divided. You understand? All right. So it says, Shiva did have dreadlocks and Shiva also had black skin. He had black skin and he had that straight ear that the Indians them have with the exception that he, he dreaded them. You understand? And he had that straight nose, that fine lip and all them thing there, which wasn't, is not the feature of Hebrews, of Israelites. You understand? But not to sidebar too much. Then, it was from Shiva G that consumption of ganja was included in religion. Let me read that again. So not only did he have dreadlocks, but he also consumed ganja. 
it was from Shivaji that consumption of ganja was included in religion. Shivaji used the consumption, used to consume ganja and meditate on the top of the um, Kailash mountain for years, right? So it's a Shivaji was a black skin ganja smoking, lack mountain loving first man god of India. So Shivaji is just, you know what I mean, India's god. He was dark skin, but Indian. Not, he would not consider himself an African. You know what I mean? All right, let me show you a picture of him. You know what I mean? Zin, show you a picture of Shivaji or Shiva. You understand? Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, leave your questions and your comments in the comment section. So this is Shiva. This is the East Indian God that Leonard Owell took his ideas from. You understand the worship of this God? He took his ideas from in order to create Rastafari. Is it? You understand? This is that God. There you have the dreadlocks. The, look, he no look like no African, you know. He looks nothing like an African or, you know what I mean, an Israelite. Of course, we know that we are not Africans, but people like to say, the Rastafari community like to use the, the, the fact that they think we are Africans to justify, you know what I mean, um, every other culture being attached to us because they claim that everybody come from Africa. Well, here is a dark-skinned man who did not consider himself African and did not even consider himself, you know what I mean, did, did not even have African features. See? But he was very dark-skinned. So dark-skinned that they show him as being blue sometime. You understand? But he was not Africans and certainly he was not an Israelite. You know what I mean? The East Indians are Elamites. You understand? We will go into that in another class, in a class, right? All right, so that is Shiva. See? That is Shiva. And that is the father of dreadlocks and Rastafariism. See? Let me go back to um, Leonard Owell again. Let me just read this one more time so it can resonate with our brothers and sisters watching. You understand? So I want to get the full understanding of where Leonard Owell got his Rastafari customs from. See? It says, Owell's emergence in Clarendon took place at a time when many East Indians lived in part of the parish, which we know that there's many East Indians in Clarendon even today. That is where they landed when they came as indentured servants. You understand? They were brought here by our oppressor and they brought ganja with them and dreadlocks and dreads. You understand? It is therefore no surprise that as both Hill and Lee have pointed out, Owell made use of his exposure to Indian culture and the Hindi language. That is where you get the dreadlocks from, and that is where you get ganja smoking from in the Rastafari community. Now, let me just show you what is relaxed, because that thing that Shiva wear on his head, that is not relaxed. See? That is dreads. Or the girl call it um slakia. Let me see what she call it again. Let me get back the name. It slipped me. You know what I mean? They have them own name for it. You know what I mean? Let me get back the name for it. Definitely made uh, Shiva Jatas. Yes, that's the name. Shiva Jatas, meaning Shiva being the god and Jatas being the ear style. You understand? All right. So Let's show you what a lock is. You know what I mean? One second. All right, so this say locks. See? Locks. One second. In reference to the hair of the head, locks render several different Hebrew words. In number six and five, the term indicate the unshorn and disheveled locks of the Nazarite. So the Rastafari community like to say, well, we grow our dreads because we are growing, the, we have the Nazarene vow, which they don't know that Nazarenes did not wear what they wear. This is what Nazarenes wear. 
Sehen, listen. Sehen, in Judges 16, 13 and 19, the braided, listen, the braided locks of the Nazarite Samson. So Nazarenes wear braids. Let me repeat. Nazarenes wear braids. Nazarenes do not wear Shiva jitters. You understand our dreads. Nazarene wear braided locks. Our cane row, like we wear in the ISUPK. We wear braids. You understand? So, you know what I mean? But what the Rastafari community is doing is nothing more than idolatry. You understand? And um, we're going to show you in the Bible where the most I condemn. You understand? Us. Condemn us for doing those things. You know what I mean? Serving other gods. You understand? One second. In the meanwhile, remember to like this video. You know what I mean? Share it around. Share on all social media platforms. You understand? You know the thing about ISUPK Jamaica. Under commanding general. You know? We bring the truth out. We are the home of the truth. You understand? We don't make our people live in lies. You understand? We don't allow our people to live in lies. We don't teach our people's lie and then pretend as if we are telling them the truth, like the Rastafari community and the Christian church. You understand? We tell our people the truth and that is not us being divided or dividing. Well, Christ did tell us, say, look, I come not to bring peace but a sword to set a man against his daughter. And why? Because people out here doing the wrong thing and when you bring the truth, it's going to make you know, it's going to make somebody know start, you know what I mean, confirm to the truth. And that will make them an enemy to their own people because nobody likes to hear the truth. So Christ come to bring the truth and it will definitely cause a division, but for, the, for a good reason. You understand? But it's not a division to destroy, but a division to bring, you know what I mean, our people together. Even David had to go to war with his own people to unite Israel. You understand? But... We can't just sit, sit, sit by and watch our people destroy themselves. You understand? So this is the book of 1 Kings 17, 34, 39. And it says, And to this day, they do after the former manner. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes of after or after their ordinance of or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel. 35 with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods. In other words, you shall not serve other gods. When you fear other gods, you will say, Eli Selassie, Holy Emmanuel, I, Jah, Rastafari, because you think that God, seeing is who put food by your table, and you will never speak bad about that God because you fear him. When something happens, you, you, you pray to Selassie for help. Because you fear Selassie and you smoke the weed in worship to Selassie and you wear the, dread, the dreads in worship to Selassie. When in fact it, it is you doing a double, it's a double trouble because guess what I go on? You're not only serving Selassie, you serve Shiva. You serve Shiva indirectly. So you fear other gods. You fear Selassie and you fear Shiva. At the same time, it's a do double whammy. You understand when the most I say you must fear him. Let me continue reading. Nor bow yourself to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. Let me read that again. Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourself to them, nor serve them by you smoking the marijuana and wearing those shiva jitters, whether that you call dreadlocks. You are serving, you are serving other gods, you are serving Shiva. Seeing, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, which is a real God, Selassie did not brought you out of the land of Egypt. When did Selassie bring you out of the land of Egypt? Zin, with great power and a stretched out arm. Him shall ye fear, meaning you shall do the things them that he say you must do. You understand? And him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. You know what I mean? And you smoking weed is not you serving this power or our God. You understand? He does not accept weed smoking nor shiva jatas or dreads. You understand? He requires you to keep his statutes and his ordinances and his commandments. 34. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore. Not for time being, 
Not for the time being. Zane, but forever and ever and ever, you should teach your children these. And you must never teach them to put shiva jitters or, or, or jatas in their ear. You understand? And he shall not fear other gods. You understand? Verse 38. And the covenant that I have made with you, ye shall not forget. Neither shall ye fear other gods. But the Lord your God ye shall fear. And he shall deliver you out of the land of all your enemies. Now you are in the land of your enemies, calling yourself Jamaicans. You understand? Why haven't Selassie saved you from the land of your enemy yet? Why haven't Shiva saved you from the land of your enemy yet? Because that is not your God. You need to come back to your God, your power. You understand as the children of Israel and start keeping his ordinance, his law, statutes and commandments, like he said. And with that, like this video, share this, you know what I mean? Share this video around as well. Leave your comments or your questions, you know what I mean? I don't know the thing going. Again, we are inviting the, the Rastafari community to have a debate with us about these things that we are bringing out, whether or not what we are saying is true or false. And with that, shalom.